with that, I'll introduce our presenters for today. Um, it's going to be Sam Beckwith from UCF and Alejandro Edwards from uh, Notre Dame. Both of them have really cool experience in um, sketching and rapid visualization and kind of bringing um, a pencil and paper into um, really cool ideas and designs, both outside of the themed entertainment industry and um, for projects in themed entertainment. So I'll pass it off to Sam here. Uh, feel free to share your screen, Sam. Yeah, sure. Um, first, I want to say hello. Hope you're all doing great. Um, as I'm sure you guys are all taking Zoom classes right now, I ask that you guys stay muted um, while you present presentations and stuff. You just don't want to mess up the audio. Um, besides that, let's start going. Let me just share a little screen here. Cool. Can you guys see a slideshow in front of you? Hope you do. Awesome. All right, guys, welcome to Sketching 101, Rapid Visualization. I'm Sam Beckwith. I'm a, UC I'm a graphic design major here at UCF. I'm a driving drawing all, all my life. Uh, I'm Alejandro Edwards. I am a rising senior at University of Notre Dame, and I'm an industrial design major. Uh, just actually more of a recent st uh, start into drawing, but uh, I've been loving it ever since I started. All right, cool. So today we're going to go over some basic drawing techniques and talk about what makes them so important. Starting off, um, does anyone want to tell me what rapid visualization is? With like the little reactions button, raise your hand. Maybe we can unmute you. Actually, I'm not the host, am I? <laughs> anyone has their hand raised, if you can unmute them, that'd be tight. Just what is rapid visualization? Wrong answers are okay. <laughs> so when I hear rapid visualization, I think you're trying to communicate an idea to somebody very quickly, just with a quick sketch to get your idea across. A plus, you're absolutely right. Rapid visualization, just a way to get your ideas onto paper in a way that others can understand. So on the top right here, we have a KUKA arm ride vehicle designed by Alejandro for a recent competition. And for a separate competition, on the bottom is a um, room in a haunted house I designed. Simple lines that represent a lot, a um, much larger idea. So let's talk about rapid visualization and the theme park design. So when it comes to theme parks, the rough sketches and early concept art are the first glimpses of what the land will actually look and feel like. As you can see with this example from early um, Jungle Cruise concept art, they're not exactly representations. They're more um, just rough designs and they change over time. They don't typically mirror the final product. More into that, on the left, we have some unused designs for the original Dumbo ride in Disneyland. As you can see, this isn't some sort of elaborate drawing, just simple line work and shading to represent a larger concept. On the other hand though, concept art like this from Galaxy's Edge, so just how influential concept art can be on the final product. Although something like this piece of art can be daunting, especially if you're new to drawing, this starts off with just a few rough sketches, just like in the last slide. However, this is pulled from the very end of the design process and shows the audience exactly what to expect without leaving much up to the imagination. Of course, concept art and design goes a long ways beyond um, the world of theme parks. Nearly everything you use on a day-to-day -day basis, like your laptop, lamp, or the chair you're sitting in, most likely start off, most likely start off as a quick sketch from someone's head. Um, that sketch was probably handed off to someone else who could further develop the design so it could finally be produced and used as intended. The ability to draw something from your head really helps in a collaborative setting because sometimes words just can't get the idea across. So over here, this is a product designed by Alejandro. It's called a skewer. It attaches like the side of a wheelchair and like cleans the wheel as it spins. It's pretty cool. Um, as you can see on the left, it starts off as a couple quick lines and later towards the right, becomes a more polished finished product. And this is a great example of how the first few sketches can evolve over time to influence um, a more efficient product. There's another example, this one I did, of how um, larger pieces of art, um, like traditional art, uh, are usually at the very end of a long process that the audience doesn't really get to see. This process involves many used and unused um, discarded sketches that help form the final outcome. So over here on the right, we have um, an early sketch of the Haunted Mansion, a super iconic building by Ken Anderson. 
And um, I want to show you that building just as iconic, that iconic as this started off as a few um, quick, simple sketches, just line, shape, perspective. And we're going to talk about all three of those things in a little bit. I'm going to hand this off to Alejandro. All right. So. Oh, let me stop sharing my screen, though. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the part of the uh, summer skill session that you all wanted to do. Get your pens, your, pa your paper, your pencils, your drawing tablets, whatever have you, because we're now going to begin the fantastic uh, uh, journey into learning how to draw. So, like I said earlier, <clears throat> the fundamentals of drawing are line, uh, shape, and perspective. Uh, in creating drawings, uh, it's just these simple, just these simple concepts that allow you to take such massive designs from the simplest uh, of like phone phone demonstrations all the way up to mo most gargantuan things like the Haunted Mansion behind me. So we're going to start off by learning how to draw lines in rapid visualization sense. When you're drawing lines, uh, or when you're in the industry, you need to be able to draw concepts really quickly and get them out to uh, your superiors uh, really fast because people want to expect quick um, quick results from uh, imaginative people. So to begin, let us start with the line. So if you can take your piece of paper out. We're going to start by drawing two dots at the top of the page. You can see those. Now you're going to be connecting the two uh, dots with the line. Uh, you're going to be going from one dot straight over to the other. Make sure that you don't flick out like this because then you have this little bit of a tail end at the end. And uh, that's just showing that you're trying to rush through your process uh, and you don't want to be doing that. So make sure you go from one end to the other, draw two uh, separate lines in the same variation. So. One here, one here, line, line. The first, the first few attempts are probably going to be uh, really uh, crummy, uh, but that's okay because uh, all art starts at the basics, and at the basics, everyone is not the greatest. Uh, this is only after, like myself, a couple of years of trying to perfect my designs. So, if your art doesn't look uh, just like mine, don't worry. Uh, as you practice throughout, throughout uh, the years, you'll be able to more effectively create these lines. Also, if you have any questions for me, uh, just raise your hand uh, or unmute yourself and I will answer as best I can. So we're just going to do this for a couple of minutes, uh, making sure that you have uh, the ability to go from point A to point B. Uh, if you feel confident enough that uh, you can draw between the two dots, get rid of the dots, and then just start drawing from one side of the page to the other, uh, and try to make sure that you keep the lines together. How do you get your lines to look so you know, my straight? Um, it really helps with the two dots. Uh, you'll be it. So just tr try imagining that the two dots are on the same plane and try to uh, follow that uh, internal plane that you have in your head. Uh, that might help a little bit. Also, try varying your speed uh, that you're trying to make the lines at. Some people take uh, no time at all to make the two lines together. Uh, some people might take a little bit longer to make sure that uh, they're able to connect it cleanly. Uh, so it just depends. Try varying your speed. Uh, also varying your pressure of how hard you put your pencil or pen on the paper. 
that might help uh, straighten out the lines a bit. So I'm sorry if you can't see your if I can't see your screens, uh, but if a good amount of people are done, uh, we can go on to the circles. If you are not, do not worry. Uh, keep making sure that your lines are getting straight and straighter. If you feel confident enough that you want to move on, uh, then you go into the next section, which is the shape uh, that we're going to be doing, which is the circle. Uh, now the circle is a lot more complicated uh, one-dimensional form than a line because you're trying to create a whole a 360 degree shape uh, that's consistently round uh, and doesn't flutter in between. So what I would recommend is that you don't have your elbow on uh, your drawing surface. Make sure that it's raised a little bit and that you're kind of hovering uh, with your drawing utensil uh, a little bit over the page. So for instance, say that this is my piece of paper right here. The back, virtual background is kind of making this a little hard, so I'm going to turn that off for a second. So if, if I have my paper right here, I probably have my hand probably about this high and making sure that the elbow does not actually touch the, uh, touch the writing surface. And what you're going to do is have that position and uh, start making the circle. Yes, it's going to be a little awkward, I know, but uh, for myself over the past couple of months that I did this when I first started out, I was able to get the circles from looking like something like that to a really nice, consistent little bubbles. Also, you can vary the size uh, to try and see if you can get smaller ones or bigger ones. Uh, so you can start developing on that. Like the old adage from Monsters, Inc. Tall kids, sissy kids, kids who climb on rocks. Just try all of them out. See what you get to feel for. Also, if you have questions, just uh, raise your hand up or demute, demute yourself. So Alejandro, on some of these, I'm finding it's kind of tough to connect like the, you know, like the starting point with like the second pass through, if that makes sense. Do you have any advice on how to sort of like make sure you're connecting those? Um, I would say uh, keep your eye on the end. So as, as you're drawing the circle, make sure that you know where you started. It's just going to turn to muscle memory. Uh, as you develop your skills. So the more times you're able to effectively get towards that end point, uh, the easier it will be to make a uh, perfect circle. If you also want, uh, you can start making a circle, uh, not touching the paper, just uh, do a circular motion with your hand gripping the writing utensil. Just hover it above the page and then slowly put, uh, put pressure onto it. Uh, that'll uh, get your muscle memory in motion like, okay, so this is the shape I want to make. And you'll be able to more effectively make circles if you start off hovering at the top.
Anyone have any questions so far? Hey, Alejandro. Yes. Should we have our hands off the paper as well as the elbow or just the elbow? Um, just, just the elbow for now. Uh, if you, you can put your palm, the uh, bottom part of your hand on it, uh, if you want to have a little bit more control, uh, or you can have it floating as well. Uh, it's really dependent on the draw. Okay, thanks. Take about another minute uh, for this section, and if uh, everyone is decently far ahead, then we can go on. If you're if you're still working on the lines or on the circles, do not worry. Uh, this is all just very chill session. No one's gonna no one's gonna judge you if you are falling behind. All right, last checkup if, uh, before we have it, uh, go on to the next one. Everyone's good. All right. With my piece of paper, I'm going to stand straight through. All right. Now uh, we're going to progress on to the perspective uh, section of the fundamentals. If you're still working the other ones, don't worry. Uh, just ca just come up to, to perspective when you can. Uh, but other than that, let's get started. So uh, I'd recommend that everyone get a fresh sheet of paper uh, or clear out your tablet for this next section. So I want you to begin by drawing a horizontal line on the long side of your paper uh, through the middle. Once everyone's got that down, uh, I want you to mark on the ends of the line uh, to the Can you notes. share your screen again? Is my screen not being shared? Um, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm still just seeing you. It's working fine for me. Check and see if it's showing up in a different screen, because I can see him in the corner of his own shared screen. Okay. Thanks. We'll do that. All right. Unshared and reshared. Good. All right. So, like I said before, make a line down the middle and put two little dots on the edges. These are what are gonna be called your vanishing points. So all perspective drawings uh, require the use of vanishing points in order for one-dimensional one shapes like we've been doing with the lines and the circles to go into two dimensions, uh, which includes form or a volume. So make the line, two little dots, and underneath the line, you're gonna make a vertical line like so. 
We're going to be drawing a simple box uh, using perspective. So this is going to be one of the edges of the box. If you can visualize a box uh, on its uh, side and you're looking right at the edge of it. We're then going to take the bottom and top of this line and draw two lines towards the right vanishing point. This is one of the sides of the box. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And there's your second side. After you make the two lines, you're going to make uh, two more vertical lines a little far, a little farther away from this first one. So it's going to be right here and right here. Hey, uh, Alejandro. Yes. Uh, so are those two lines? Are they supposed to like connect, or are they supposed to be a little bit apart? Uh, the two side lines. Yeah. Um. You. Theoretically, yes, they're supposed to connect, but uh, in this instance, since we're just uh, trying to learn rapid visualization, they don't necessarily need to. Uh, you just want a good baseline for you to be able to uh, connect the two sides together. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Then after you make the two lines, the two vertical lines, you're going to take the tops of these two vertical lines here and here and draw them to the, to the opposite vanishing point. Take this one right here and go to that vanishing point. No one to the other dimension. And then, in essence, you have your basic perspective square. You can deep darken the lines a little bit by going back over them uh, of the newly formed square. Uh, and you can erase the uh, vanishing line and the uh, connecting points if you want. So. There you go. That's a basic perspective box. If anyone needs help uh, drawing this, uh, I'm here if you need me. If you'll want, I can also show you how to do a version of this box, but up here on the top. So this is what's called a bird's eye view. You're looking down onto the box. If we were to do it in this section of the, uh, of the paper, it'd be called a worm's eye view. So you'd be looking up to it. So either the box is being thrown beneath you or it's coming at your head. If you want to learn the worm's eye, this is uh, the process. So essentially, you are going to be uh, inverting what you've been doing on the bottom. So you're first going to make a line uh, down the center of the top area. And you're going to make your uh, connecting points towards the vanishing lines, or the, the vanishing points. There.
And you're gonna make your two little lines going off to the sides of it. And just like before, we'll take the top, the now bottoms of the two new lines and drag them to the opposite dimensions. Darken the edges. And now you have the box coming at your head. Eventually, with enough practice uh, doing these vanishing lines, you'll be able to actually make these perspective drawings without the use of having to draw out the uh, the horizon line, which is the line through the middle and the vanishing points. You'll be able to just do this um, using muscle memory alone. Something like this. Box Sands Vanishing Lines. Uh, if you feel confident enough, uh, you can try doing this. Uh, but if you want to stick with the vanishing, li vanishing lines, then I completely understand. I'll probably take another two minutes on this. Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Yes, Jack. So uh, I don't know what kind of uh, like art you do, um, but is this kind of something where like if you wanted to start doing like concept art for like a building, like something kind of big, like you could start with kind of a 3D box and then just kind of keep building on it? Is that like a technique? That is actually what we're going to be talking about in about two minutes. <laughs> oh, nice. Because uh, I was like, it seems like this kind of good uh, building block, pun intended. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. Oh yes, it's, to it's totally useful for building blocks uh, in terms of that uh, concept art style. Uh, I'm coming from a more uh, industrial background, so uh, not so much of a concept art idea. So I usually like to uh, draw things that are a little, uh, that are a little more mass produced, like phones, uh, uh, say other things like ocarinas. Like they have their handheld defined forms. So I'm able to use these perspective tools that I learned here and translate that into uh, the forms that I'm working with. Concept artist uh, uh, takes uh, references from other, from other things and puts them into their drawings. Um, I've actually been trying to learn that a little bit myself, but for now, yes, uh, perspective is the, some of the building blocks for my, my background. When I try making cubes, my top always ends up, or my bottom always ends up looking really fat. Do you have any way to combat that? Um, can you share your screen so I can see what's going on? Uh, I'm writing on my tablet, but I can turn the virtual background off and just hold it up. They always get really fat at the bottom or top, right? Ah, uh, so. Uh, I'm trying to point at it from... Yeah. There. Oh. Good thing. Yeah. Um, so like the front line is a little is a little fatter than the other two lines at the sides. It's, so it's making it so the bottom looks a little bit fatter than the top. Yeah. All right. So it looks, it looks like it's at a funky angle. So you're saying like this section right here is a little bit fatter than the top, right? I'm saying that like when you make the top um, of the box, when you have the opposing lines going to the vanishing points, mm. my big problem always seems to be that it doesn't look, I don't know, realistic. It looks like it's at a different angle than it should be. I don't know. 
Jessica, I think the problem you might be having is just the placement of those side lines, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> making your sides longer. So just try and, it seems like you tend to do the right one farther away. Just try and make it closer to that center mm -hmm. line. Yeah, because at, yeah, at, at, that, at that range, you're kind of working with uh, more of a rectangular prism than an actual cube. Like this one that I just drew, it's more of a, a prism than an actual cube because I put the right one a little too far away. Uh, so trying to make sure that they're equally spaced from the uh, edge line at the very center, that'll help make sure that the cube looks like a cube. And I think a little part of it too is like vanishing points in the real world are almost like you can imagine infinity away where you're putting them like four inches away in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see how Alejandro sometimes like curve in um, yeah. That'll make things look like really sharp and drastic, almost as if you were like, you know, zoomed in right next to the box. If you kind of imagine your vanishing points like a mile away and draw to those, uh, it might help things look a little less like. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. All right. If everyone is good with uh, that, uh, even, if, even if you're not, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, we are going to be going on to the next section. Uh, so you've essentially learned all the ba very basic fundamentals of creating, creating ideas from your head onto the page. Uh, it does take a long time uh, from you going from uh, basic line work and basic perspective that might be a little janky uh, to actually uh, going to really crisp designs uh, that look in, that look like the real thing. So don't really worry if your designs don't look up to scratch right now. Uh, if you keep practicing at it, uh, then they definitely will uh, look like uh, professionally done, done things. But for now, we're going to go on to the second section. So if you get a new piece of paper out, I want you to draw the horizon line way at the top. So, uh, like was a little mentioned earlier, uh, these perspective blocks can actually be used uh, to create a thing sort of like Legos or building blocks. So for this section, I want you to take the perspective skills uh, that you've been, that you just learned and expand it out and to draw something uh, similar uh, to something that's in real life. And we've chosen this beautiful thing right here, the Haunted Mansion. Uh, it's a pretty simplistic design in terms of overall shape. It's basically a box uh, with a triangle in the middle and pillars. So what I want you to do is take uh, your perspective building blocks and try and create the Haunted Mansion. I'll be uh, doing this along with you uh, so you can see the process of how I would construct the Haunted Mansion. Uh, and if you want to have uh, a reference picture of the Haunted Mansion, I have mine back up here, although my head's in the way, so I don't know how much use that might be. Uh, so if you want to also take a look at a separate uh, image on either your phone uh, or if you have a picture of the Haunted Mansion somewhere in your house because that's awesome. You can look at that too. But first we're going to make uh, the edge of the house which is going to be this section right here. So you're going to take a long line down this way. And we're going to kind of take that concept of extending out the vanishing lines. It's not going to be at these, at the edge of the page. The page is too small. Because if I did that, the vanishing line would be so wank wanky that it looks like that you're kind of going into ludicrous speed from Spaceballs. And we don't want that because we want to have something that looks a little bit more realistic. So the vanishing points are going to be kind of outside of the picture frame. It's a little weird to think of, but just try to imagine the page extending farther than the bounds of what you have. 
uh, and try to visualize that vanishing point uh, further along. So, so this side is a much more realistic sense uh, of what the haunted mansion might look like, uh, because instead of framing everything down into the one vanishing point that ends right at the page, you're able to extend the view a little bit longer uh, so that uh, it doesn't look like you're warping space and time. Next up is the other side. Now we're going to take the one edge of the Haunted Mansion, the far end right here, Take a line down here. So we have a nice workspace uh, for the front of the mansion. So this area right here is going to be the front side with the pillars. And then uh, imagine the vanishing point out on the side of your page. Try to visualize connecting towards that vanishing point. Now we're going to do the back side a little bit. Not terribly much, because we're concerned mainly with the front view. This is a bit of an extreme angle for myself, so I'm gonna move things. Okay. So I'm noticing myself that the initial line that I made is a little bit, a uh, little bit too long, because now uh, it looks like that the Haunted Mansion building itself is stretched at the very front. So I'm going to make a little alteration. I'm going to start with the top being here. Racer, don't be that big, please. So I do apologize uh, in advance if anyone was caught, uh, caught up in the first one. It's it is hard to do perspective drawing, so it does it does take you realizing that uh, some things are not perfect, and you redoing your designs. Little alterations here and there. That's quite. So once you finally create your box, uh, you can highlight in the uh, edges of it. So that is the base for the Haunted Mansion. Now we're going to add the most uh, prominent feature of it, the uh, triangle, 
at the top. So what I like to do here is to actually X out one of the sides. So if we this edge here, corner to corner, you'll separate your box, uh, your side of the box into four distinct zones. And you're gonna take what's called the midpoint right here. That's the middle from the uh, top to the bottom. And from what I can see here, Going to, I'm going to draw, yeah, actually draw the midline between the two zones and go just a little bit higher right here, here, here. These will be the two points at the end. Kind of looks like a crown. You're going to take the midline here, just go straight up. A little dot right here. Connect them up. And that's the front. The triangle. Now you're going to add a little bit of. Um, pardon? Can repeat that real quick. Uh, which, which section? The ending points of the triangle. So from from the uh, x from the zone making. Yeah. So you'll be uh, creating these the two x's here, then the midline drawing through the center. Go a little above the uh, midline right here. That'll be your first point. Do the same on the other side. Second point. Then draw a straight line from the midpoint itself up to the top of the box and create a little dot. Uh, uh, that seems reasonable, and then just connect all three together. We're going to make sort of an imaginary, well, it's not going to be imaginary in a second, but you're going to create some extra space um, by uh, perspective being out the triangle. So right now it looks like that the triangle is directly on the face of the box, but if we add some perspective lines that are going to the vanishing point uh, way down that way, I'm going to add a little bit of depth. Just, just these two lines up here. And then connect, and you're gonna connect it. Then take the two sides up, and that's the top. Now we're going to add the very famous columns. Uh, if anyone's having trouble still, just uh, unmute yourself and I'll try to help as I can. Now, circular uh, columns going up and down is a bit tricky because uh, you're wanting to outline, you're going to want to outline the edges of the cylinder. Uh, so, it's, it's, it's a little hard to explain. I'll just let me show you. So the edge of the cylinder here comes to about here. I'm going to draw a line straight down to the bottom of the square. And you're going to find the other edge of that cylinder and go down. You're then going to make a small round at the bottom and connect to the other side. Okay. 
And you're going to do that again, but since uh, these pillars are a little bit close together, we're going to actually only draw one line uh, that's a little farther out over here. Down here. And then make a curve that goes behind the first pillar. And you do that again two more times. So like we said before, rapid visualization is kind of crude in its own right. Oh, okay. So this is definitely not in vitro, in vitro of what the actual animation looks like, but that's a basic idea of the front. Uh, you can uh, show that to someone who's like, oh, that's columns coming from uh, a, a pyramid shape at the top. You can easily communicate that. Now, we're going to draw the uh, chimneys uh, and the um, uh, the center image. Of, I, I can never remember the name of that darn thing. It's the thing in the middle at the top of the roof, whatever that is called. So someone can uh, say it in chat or speak it out, and that'd be really nice because I forgot. So what we're going to do is make two chimneys on the side, here and here, and we're going to have the spire in the middle be about here. So first we're going to draw a little lineup. Things that are farther back are going to be a little bit longer at the top and a bit shorter at the bottom. And connect the two over. That's Jimmy One. Do the same thing again a little farther back. That's the basic two chimneys. So all we're essentially doing is making uh, building blocks go on top of each other. We're gonna make the middle tower that goes in the center. The image a little bit. Thank you. 
I'm gonna do one last thing uh, for this little section because we are running quickly through the time slot. Uh, we're just gonna add a little bit of uh, additive design to it. So as you can see on the sides here, there's a lot of openings, uh, floral openings. I'm just gonna make those openings on the sec second and first floors. Uh, and that will give us a very basic representation of the the Haunted Mansion within about 20 minutes. I'm going to make two little arches on the side. The left, ar the left end of the arch is going to be a little bit uh, lower than the right end because you're still going to be using the same vanishing point and connecting the two. This one at the bottom. And then it happens uh, a couple times on the side. We'll probably just do three. This time, the right one is going to be lower because the vanishing point is on the left side. And that's basically it. A very uh, quick, rapid visualization of the haunted mansion. Anyone who is following along is finished. If you want to like throw up your drawing to the camera, can you show everyone? If you're at that point yet. <laughs> Very good, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Looks perfect. Yep. Sick. All right. Looking clean. Good job, Caitlin. Pretty good, Spencer. Pretty good. Oh, Michael's looks pretty good. Cool. Yeah, Sam. Yours looks really nice. Oh, thanks. I was copying what's behind you. Nice job, man. So yep, yeah, that is a uh, basic perspective uh, put in, into a little bit more complex effort in order to create uh, something that we all know, love and recognize. Uh, if you had definitely had more time, you, know, you would be refining these forms uh, constantly, making sure that you are consistently improving them to uh, make sure that it looks a little bit more like this. But overall, uh, that is a basic foray into perspective rapid visualization. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, I see a lot of guys are still finishing up. Um, what time is it? Uh, 6.57. All right, cool. So um, hmm. am I still pushing to the next activity? That's cool with you guys. Um, so I think Kaylin sent out, sent out an email before this whole thing regarding this little drawing right here. Um, yeah, all of you guys print it out or anything or have it downloaded on an iPad, something like that. Um, if you do though, you can take that out. It's a little, little car line work. All right. So the basis of this is that, check it out. We're Epic Universe. I heard that people at Universal trying to get a new, like, hybrid dark ride with Fast and the Furious. Because, you know, last one, a little, you know, not too exciting. You want to up the ante with this one. So they sent out, they're going to be using these sort of ride vehicles, and they're asking you guys to redesign them. Um, with this basic shape, you can add, subtract, do whatever you want, but your creative freedom, we want to see what you guys can come up with, with this. If you haven't printed, if you haven't drawn it out, or sorry, um, downloaded or anything like that, it's fine. 
can just kind of make your own sketch or half of what we got here. But yeah, it was to give you a little bit of time to create your own um, car themed ride vehicle. And yeah, I think me and Alejandro both will be sharing our screens. I'm just coming in from my phone so you can see my thing too. We're gonna be drawing along too if you have any questions about um, how to do something, if you're not sure what something looks like, anything like that, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask. But this is your, your creative freedom time. So uh, uh, take, take, your, take the time that you need. Uh, just go crazy with uh, whatever you have in your head uh, and check back in on us if you can. Exactly. One thing about this too, when you have your finished product, if you're like proud of it and you want to share it more, um, just take a picture or scan it. Um, and then we'll post it to the summer skills session website we're building. Um, so like a collage with, you know, all 40 of your uh, cars. So if you can do that, we'll have an email at the end. Um, Caitlin, can you just put that in the chat also? Um, your email for people to send it into. Uh, so if you have to dip early or if you want to spend more time than the third, like 15, 20 minutes we have here, um, feel free to do that and then send it in to Caitlin. All right, cool. I think I have the email pop up in the last slide. Um, so just remember, this is a rough concept. It does not have to be a perfect polished piece of art. Just get your ideas on the paper. That's all you gotta do. Cool. I'm just called out on time. Of course, you can work on this more later. I'm not gonna stop you from drawing. But um, yeah, if you're proud of it, I'd love you to get a picture of it, send over to Caitlin or email. Maybe just throw it up to the camera real quick. So that's what you got. <laughs> Looks pretty sick. Yeah. Also looking pretty cool. All right. Yeah. I'll be honest, I haven't seen many Fast and the Furious movies. I just um, inspired mine on those uh, ridiculous cars you see. All right. Oh, yeah. Jack, Jack, Jack is the bomb. Jet packs on everything. Jessica, you might want to do your background. Oh. I think I started trying to turn mine into like a ripoff of cars. Mine has <laughs> uh, big jet engines in the back because I kind of just imagined Vin Diesel being like, to make yeah. your car faster, we gave it rocket engines. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's nuclear fusion and everything. Boy. Um, I didn't end up working on the car because I don't have the portrait, but I ended up spending a lot more time on the... Oh, that looks gorgeous. Pretty. Whoa! That looks so good. Thanks. That's really good, those really good, so good. Really good job, Michael. Yeah. I also it's like a that square works. with a triangle on it. How does yours look so good? <laughs> I'm going to practice. I'm also in industrial design, so that's part of it, too. Let's go! <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm turn this all right, on. all right. I did the same thing on Haunted Mansion. Ah, that looks really good. look really good. Yeah. Changing the workspace up, you know what it is. You, you guys took to this like fish in water. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So to wrap everything up, I'm going to pull up another PowerPoint. Hey, Sam, I'm sorry. I came into this call kind of late. Is there yeah. a picture that we were referring to while uh, drawing or? Yeah, so um, I think Kaylin sent one out. It was like, well, I drew all over mine, but it was basically um, just a little PNG of a car. Uh, you might have been in the little email loop if you're with T and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you're not, though, you just always ask, like, email me or something afterwards. I'll email one to you if you want it. Okay. I don't know if I am, but I'll take a look. Oh, right, sure. All right. I'm going to throw the outro on there. Mm. Okay. All right, cool. Everyone see my screen? Awesome. So this is the thing I gave you guys a little while ago, basic car. And um, if you're into theme parks, which I'm sure a lot of you are because you're here, you might actually recognize it. It's from Test Track. So as you can see, um, on the left, there's some really cool concept art done by Imagineers. And um, they all start off as little sketches like we just did. And they got turned into a real thing like here on the right. And um, I know no one's been to Epcot recently because, you know, it's closed. However, if you've been since 2012, they actually got a redesign. It's all in blue. And again, started off as concept art, started off as actually sketched like what we just did and got turned into a real concept. Um, they, they did the same thing we just did. If you've been to California over in um, 
California Adventure. They got Cars Land, and the same exact thing happened. They start off with some sketches on a base model. They did some more concept art, and they actually built it. Um, I wanted to use this um, this model of the of the car to show you that it starts just like with what you're doing. You may not be a concept artist, or a um, you may not even want to go into this field, but it's simple as what you're doing. You know, it helps. All right, cool. So now that we've gone over some of the sketching basics and the importance of rapid visualization. I just want to wrap this up by saying thank you to all of you for logging on, hearing mm -hmm. what we got to say. Um, thank you to Caitlin and Jake over in Notre Dame for, you know, setting this whole thing up. Thanks to Alejandro for doing this with me. If you want to say anything, too. Uh, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Sam, for uh, agreeing, agreeing to uh, be a part of this. You are absolutely fantastic in doing this. Thank you all for uh, joining us uh, on this uh, Thursday uh, to just draw some stuff. Like, uh, it's something you can do just right at your home. So pick up a piece of paper, pick up a pen, a pencil, or your tablet, just get on it. Uh, this is a really, it's really rewarding uh, when you get to be able to practice uh, your heart and soul into it. And uh, through, the couple of, through the couple of years uh, of trial and error, be able to create something as monumental or as impressive as any imaginary. Cool. Well, thank you, both of you. Let's give them a Zoom round of applause. For an awesome session. Uh, thank you for putting that together. That was a lot of fun. Um, just a reminder to send in either your Haunted Mansion or your car, if you're proud of it, to either the Discord chat or to Caitlin. Also, if you weren't on any email list, like if you found this through Instagram or some other way, um, just also shoot a message to Caitlin and we'll make sure to add you to the email list so you see all of these in uh, future weeks. And then just as a heads up, next Thursday we'll be having um, a career building session with Paul Osterhout from Disney Imagineering, who's actually over in Beijing right now. Um, and he'll be walking us through sort of like how to present yourself, especially in this coronavirus time. And then on the Friday after, we're going to have like a networking night. It's like a mixer for all students um, in themed entertainment. So all of you are welcome to join. It'll just be a chance to meet a bunch of other students interested in the industry and to put into practice some of those things we learn at Thursday's session. And then the one other one to call out, we don't have the date exactly determined but there will be a sketching like 2.0 session with a disney imagineer concept designer so he'll help us take the like foundation skills we learned here um and apply them more directly to uh the industry that i assume most of us are interested in working in um with that i'll send the discord link in the chat um and are there any other last questions caitlin could you send your email in the discord chat one last time really quick Once I find the group me link, the Discord link, I got it. You want it in the Discord chat, right? Not the Zoom chat? Oh, you beat me to it, Jack. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm going to cool. get off for, for me a few minutes because the next session is like, I think in eight minutes. And yeah, I that's what go I was going to say. Eat yeah, dinner so for eight minutes before that. So thank you very much. <laughs> yep. Have a good one. So thank you. That, yeah, UCSD is hosting another uh, meeting with uh, doing Imagineering in a Box. Um, so feel free. I think the link is on the Discord, which you now have the link to. Um, hop on there. That'll start at 630. So uh, if you have the time, another chance to learn from uh, some more themed entertainment stuff. Uh, with that, I'm going to head out. You guys have a great day. All right, later. Thanks, Jacob. Cheers, everyone.